So I'll spare you all the wank and BS in saying that this is the first unboxing because I went through the entire recording process of unboxing this new package and lo and behold my vocal processor decided that it wanted to change patches on me and unbeknownst to me it had a real nice thick reverb over top of everything I had to say. So without further ado this is the re-unboxing video of a very unhappy me but a pretty happy me as far as this product is concerned. If you have been poking around on the usual social channels as of late, you may have seen sponsored ads for a new company called EMG Precision. EMG Precision is based out of the UK. They are a manufacturer of CNC spindles, tool setters, touch probes, both wired and wireless, as well as tool holders and vices, work holding, things like that for the CNC machine tool industry. This is not a paid video. This video is brought to you solely by me in exchange for this package that I have before me. So aside from that, no other compensation is involved and I am free to say exactly what I want, how I want, when I want, and where I want. So what this is, is this is one of the first products out from EMG Precision, and this is their UTS-2 CNC tool height setter. So inside the box we have an air deflector tube, we have the brass fitting to hook up the air line for an air solenoid for cleaning off the top surface of the tool sensor prior to measurement. Very nice manual. It seems to be pretty well worded. The tool sensor itself has a touchpad diameter of 20 millimeters. It has an available normally open or normally closed output with an 11 millimeter stroke length, which includes a two position switch for touch sensor triggering as well as an emergency stop if an over travel is reached. It is IP68 rated for waterproof and the top surface of this tool sensor is a little different than others that I've seen. This one actually is ceramic. Usually you'll see a carbide face. This one actually has a ceramic face on it which is a nice touch. Another nice touch that I noticed is that the cable I didn't get a measurement on it, but the cabling is incredibly long. I want to say that it's roughly 15 feet or so. Plenty good for most applications for vertical machining centers. It's got a six wire hookup because it has an LED status indicator light to let you know when the thing is on. But I mean, it, there's there's no way to unroll this thing to show you how long it is without me actually taking my camera off the tripod but you could see that just by the number of wraps around in my hand this thing's got some length to it you'll see that it's got EMG precision laser etched on the side it's the UTS-2 the case is held together by safety torques on both the side and the top. It has a nice stroke range. I do plan on taking this apart in the near future to see the internals and see how well made this thing is. But from the outside it does seem like it's made pretty well. The action's pretty smooth. This little ring here kind of it was dingling around for a bit. It does It does unscrew unbeknownst to me. So that's why I was making all that ruckus. So that's a little bit better. It has a little mounting block with four jack provisions to align it once it's installed. So you can dial in 
the top surface of the sensor. Once you have it on your table, you can sweep across with an indicator and you can use these to dial in the X and Y to make sure that it's perfectly flat inside your machine. And again, like I said, it comes with two screws to mount the tool setter itself to the block. It comes with the brass fitting that screws in on the side and the little deflector tube that goes on the top. Once you have it lined up, it locks in place with a little lock nut. And then these screws would secure the setter to the base. The one thing I did notice on my first unboxing was that the edges of this block are a little on the sharp side. There's some burrs here. But aside from that, build-wise, it does seem like it's a very nicely built product. I won't know how well it's built until I really rip into it. And if I break something, then hey, that's just better content. It operates anywhere from 10 to 30 volts DC with the 24 volt recommended input voltage. The LED light will trigger again when the unit is turned on and ready to use. There is a page that's got the general dimensions, not including the mounting block. So it's 90 millimeters high from here to the top. So from here to here is 90.0 90.6 millimeters. 20 millimeter ceramic face contact surface. 50 millimeters this way, 27 millimeters this way. And then I want to say that this block is 19 millimeters, so that stacks up a little bit. So say 19, 20 millimeters plus the 90, say 110. So 110 millimeters from here to here is roughly four inches in freedom. So it is a little taller than the tool setters that I have seen and the tool setters that I personally own but I don't think that'll be that big of an issue and it's not going to be an issue for larger machining centers which this is more geared towards as opposed to the little rinky dinky x3 mills and things like that like my sx3 mill this is going to be a little overkill for what I'm using it for but it will work and fit my needs. It is a little tall for my router so I would have to make some sort of provision to use it there only because the z-axis stroke on my router is so limited. Application wise it's good for it's good for anything that would use the 10 to 30 volt DC range. So check your manufacturer's IO voltage but it's fully compatible with Mach 3, Linux CNC, UC CNC, Siemens, Fanuc, Mitsubishi, as long as the I.O. board that you're using works within the, again, 10 to 30 volt range. It does not include the measurement macros that would be required to actually use this, but a lot of the hobby guys that would be purchasing this typically can either find a Mach 3, Mach 4, or Linux CNC macro online, or it's not really hard to write one. And as far as putting this on an industrial machine, if you're familiar with Fanuc Macro B, it's not really difficult to write. And I did agree to help out in the future with assisting with the tool measurement macros for some of the systems, not all of the systems, but some of the systems. If you have an 828 or an 840D, you can get the Siemens measurement cycles, and then you could set up this tool setter like you would a Renishaw or Marpos or Heidenhain or any of those.
pretty much the same basic premise. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you're interested in the EMG Precision product line, I will leave some links in the description of this video, along with a coupon code to save 5% on your first purchase. Again, I'm not being compensated in any way for this video, aside from being able to keep this once I'm done taking it apart, testing it out, and reporting back with my good, bad, or indifferent comments on it. Like I said, the unit does seem to be built very well. The base itself could use a little corner filing, and it is a little on the tall side, but aside from that, it does look like a very nice product, and I can't wait to set it up on one of my machines and see how it works. In the next video, I'm probably going to bench test it with my multimeter to see how sensitive it is, if I can just give it a little bit of a press or if I have to give it a real good press. But from the looks of it, I think it's going to be a pretty good unit. So again, thank you for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content and we'll see you soon.